I'm here to talk about the ban list that was just released for January 28th of 2019. So this was a pretty big ban list. We've had a lot of significant changes that directly affects the meta going forward. And it talks about a lot of the cards that were hit and kind of hit some of the competitive liability of some of the heavier meta decks such as Thunder Dragons and Combo, Dark Warrior, Rongo, and etc. etc. So today I'm going to talk about some of the hits on the ban list and tell you a little bit about what these changes do for the meta, why these cards are limited, and some of the things that got a little bit released and how they'll impact the meta. Starting off, we have Fairy Tale Snow. So, Fairy Tale Snow is basically what a lot of people played in Dungeon Dragon Combo, as well as Burning Abyss. I believe that this was mainly banned because Dungeon Dragon Combo's Triple Snow as a defensive card is really strong. And Snow in general is just a card that has a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. Snow isn't once per turn, and it gives you a, basically a free Book of Moon effect when you banish 7 from your graveyard, which not only triggers your Thunder Dragon monster effects, but also helps you manipulate your graveyard in a way that you can choose what you want inside it and outside it. Snow is also a free extender that's not once per turn and can put up extra damage if it's needed. So Snow overall is a really powerful card, and because Thunder Dragons can use it so prominently and abuse it with their Dungeon Dragon Banishing Effect cards, Snow is really strong, and that's why I basically got hit. This is also a indirect hit to Burning Abyss, because Burning Abyss also relies on Snow. That's one of the same reasons that Thunder Dragons rely on it, as a defending card, as well as an extender, a damage pusser, and just a good card in general to have. Next, we have Grinder Golem. So, going into Grinder Golem, Grinder Golem was mainly banned because of its combo viability. There's a lot of combos in the TCG right now that involves you playing a lot of bricky cards, but Grinder Golem is basically, in short, a one card extra link. Or if you don't want to play the super bricky extra link variant, you can play the variant where Grinder Golem basically turns into a free link four. It's a free extender for your opponent. It's a really sacky card at one, and having a ban basically just makes the meta a little bit more scary. Next, we have Topologic Gumbler Dragon. Mainly enforces very degenerate play. No one really likes getting four cards hit out of your hand, probably not unless you're a Dark Lord player. Um, it's really oppressive and it basically limits the options where your opponents get to play against you. So combo based decks and decks that just basically overwhelm you or swamp you out or blow you out during the first turn are kind of dumbed down a bit. Going on, we have two XYZ bands. We have Galaxy Tomahawk number 42 and Wrong Minia number 86. So Galaxy Tomahawk is a card that basically uses two level sevens to make a full board and link climb. Now. In the current meta, having two level 7s is pretty easy. It's pretty easy to go to level 7 with the Strudo, as well as with the new Danger cards, because Nessie is a level 7. What a lot of people don't realize is that Greffer and Jackalope, or Nessie, is almost always a Tomahawk. It's a good hit because it kind of slows down the pace of the game. It makes Link Climbing a little bit diff more difficult, which is always good because getting overwhelmed by a huge Link board is pretty oppressive nowadays. But then we have number 86. Wrong mini ad. So anyone who plays competitive or plays meta knows that Rongo Bongo Turbo, if you don't open up hand traps, it's very hard to play. There shouldn't ever be a format where I need to play triple Impermian, triple Ash Blossom, triple Ghost Ogre in order for me to even have a chance at contesting victory in Yu-Gi-Oh. So getting Rongo hit, I actually like Rongo, but because of Dark Warrior Turbo, Rongo is something that needed to get hit in this list because of its oppressive play. Soul Charge. I think most people know why Soul Charge is like absolutely disgusting to play against. If you get hit by a Soul Charge, it just feels like you got completely sacked, and it's not really like a skillful card. Like your Soul Charge basically allows your opponent to run into all of your cards, not even trying to bait them. Like they just run into your hand traps, and then once you've exhausted all your hand traps and defending cards, thinking that your opponent no longer has a play, Soul Charge basically rewards your opponent for playing like they did. Really oppressive to deal with, so good hit. And I think that's all for our bands. So yeah, we're going to the limited section now. So Chaos Emperor Dragon, we got the errata version in Jump recently. It now says, uh, it has the same effect, but you cannot activate other cards or effects during the turn you activate this card's effect. Um, this basically means if you do anything other than summon Chaos Emperor Dragon or just activate Chaos Emperor Dragon's effect um, on that specific turn, then you basically are not allowed to do anything else. And having it at one, it might see a little bit a competitive variance, but because other Chaos cards like Chaos Dragon Levianir and Black Luster Soldier are so strong, um, it's very unlikely that Chaos Emperor Dragon will be seen played very prominently in the meta. So going forward, we have Cyberstein at 1. Uh, Cyberstein in general is what you call a very high risk card. Back then they didn't have Baylor, they didn't really have effect negation. If you just dropped a Stein on turn 1, you were going to pay 5,000 to get a monster. Nowadays, 
We have triple impermeance, and most meta decks play triple impermeance. Yes, if it goes through, you might get a huge advantage, but get not like activating a cyber sign and just assuming that your opponent won't impermeance you is usually wishful thinking in a format. And next we have Dark Refer from being unlimited to being at one. Um, healthy change kind of basically says Dark Warrior combo, I don't want you in the meta anymore. And it's also a pretty good change for design ceiling going forward because Dark Refer is a card that can be played with Danger and Danger is getting a lot more support. And Dark Refer is probably one of the most MVP cards in Danger because of what it does. It lets you discard and basically control your graveyard. It gives you management, helps you mill the Strudo, and in general, it's basically Armageddon Knight, but better in Dangers. But putting Refer to 1, you give a little bit more design space to Danger because Danger can now be a little bit more broken in their card effects without being able to abuse Refer. Strut and Brionic are cards that people who've played Necrosh should all be a Stellar Knight Trinity farm I would know about. Strut was really strong because it's basically a one card uh, ritual fodder that lets you also search every warrior in your deck when um, you activate it. So you would often just tribute Shirit for maybe a Trishula or a Valkyrus, I believe, and it would basically use up your whole ritual, so you wouldn't have the ritual using excess cards. On top of that, once you tributed it, you get a free search, so it lets you search out a Brionic or a Trishula or I believe Valk. And with that being said, because Brionic is at 3, the deck consistency of Necroz got basically increased tremendously because you basically went from 1 rota to 3 rotas. Even though it is once per turn, Brionic is still a really amazing card for Necroz because it's basically your toolbox, it's basically what gets you to the cards that you need, and it's really good because being able to add any Necroz monster, which includes Shirit, is just really good because it's a free search and it helps improve consistency because of that. Construct. So Construct is a card that basically shared the format with Necroz at the time. Um, Construct's greatest asset is that it's basically a foolish burial in the format that can send a Shadal card to the grave. And the way that I see Construct is the same way that I see um, El Shadal Shankanaga um, and how they played in trains. And Construct basically does the same thing except for light variants. So with Construct being at one, the utility of having a Shadal Fusion in the side deck and a uh, construct in the extra deck becomes a lot better because you can basically mill free light targets to the graveyard with Shadal Fusion. Um, I'm not really sure what comes to mind when I say light targets to mill with Shadal Fusion, but I'm sure someone will come up with something that's good to mill going forward. Uh, overall, a lot of people did want off the ban list, so seeing that at one is pretty nice because I actually do like Shadals myself. And moving forward, we have Brilliant Fusion at one. So. Brilliant Fusion is probably very prominent in Dunder Dragons, and it's also an indirect nerf hit to World Legacy. Um, most often you would Brilliant Fusion for a Seraph Knight to get an extra normal summon, or you'd Brilliant Fusion for a Prismura because it's a Thunder Fusion monster, I believe. Um, I don't like this change for a few reasons. So I believe that Brilliant Fusion is a card that should either be at 3 or should get banned. I say this because, not because I want it to be OP, but I say it because I believe that when you have Brilliant Fusion at 1, it creates a game space where if one person has Brilliant Fusion and another person does not, it creates an overwhelming advantage for the player that opens up a Brilliant Fusion. Kind of what Soul Charge does. It kind of creates that imbalance where one player has it and one player doesn't. And that's always been kind of the case for Yu-Gi-Oh! But having Brilliant Fusion at 1 basically means that it's more of a Saki card as before it was more of a consistency uh, card because you can rely on Brilliant Fusion having it at 3, but it's a lot more hard to rely on it when it's at 1. Gold Circ being at 1 is pretty obvious, it's a nerf to Thunder Dragon's consistency. Gold Circ basically just did so much for Thunder Dragons. You can banish any Thunder Dragon monster from your deck, and you get the effect of the banishes. And in 2 turns, if the game lasts that long, you will get it back. It's a free plus, and it's just really good. And having it at 3, with it not being once per turn, makes Thunders quite hard to deal with. So having it at 1, it's an appropriate change. Magical Midbreaker feel, from unlimited to being at 1. So, like I said, Konami's trying to cut down on that restrictive gameplay. A Magical Midbreaker field basically says half the cards in your hand that are defensive and reactive are dead. It says that you can't impermeance me, nor can you ghost ogre me. It was really strong because combo would use it on turn 1, and it would basically stop your opponent from being able to react to combo. And after that, because the combo has been set up and you weren't able to play against it, it's really difficult to come back from a combo board, regardless of what you're playing. Kind of defeats the purpose of fun and interactive gameplay. So having it at 1, I'd rather see it at 0, but having it at 1 is great because it makes combo not be able to solely rely on Magical Midbreaker Field as much, if combo is still a thing after this ban list. And now we have Scapegoat from Semi-Limited to Limited. Um, 
I don't think it's going to change too much. Scapegoat isn't seeing much play in this format to begin with. Might be a small hit that tricks our Sky Strikers because it would be harder if I didn't use Scapegoat for Link Climbing. But overall, the decks that are going to play two are just going to play one, or they might just cut it because they don't think having that extra deck space to play Scapegoat variant cards is worth it anymore. And lastly, for limited, we have Slash Draw. So Slash Draw FDK is something that's kind of taking the meta. I wouldn't say by storm because it's not too prominent, but it's something that will sometimes catch you off and it's quite annoying when you get hit by the Slash Draw FTK. So Slash Draw FTK basically involves you milling a bunch of cards and then burning your opponent with Slash Draw for a bunch of damage. I don't know in specific how the combo works, but I know that if you don't open up with the proper stoppers, it is relatively consistent enough to at least take games off you. And going into a YCS or a big event, regionals or whatever, I don't think people would like to play against FTK in the first two rounds because you wouldn't be prepared for it and then basically kill your record just because you weren't prepared for Slash Raw FTK. So having it at one basically hurts the FTK by a lot because I don't think it's viable at one. I think you need at least two. And just a good change because FTK decks are definitely not fun and interactive to play against. So, semi-limited, no changes here, but we do have a bunch of unlimited changes. So in Zector Hornet, uh, Congratulations, Insector players. You finally got Hornet back at 3, but your Dragonfly is still at 1, unfortunately. Uh, having Hornet at 3 basically means it could get banished and you would still be able to play the game, but it doesn't really impact the deck up to a point where it makes it worthy in contention of meta, at least in my opinion. It's nice to have at 3, but it shouldn't have been at 3 for a while now, and Insector just really aren't that strong in the meta where you're good enough in order to contest the current meta in terms of card quality. And after that, we have Exiton Knight going back up to 3. Um, Exiton Knight is a card that you probably never played at 3, even if it was at 3. Uh, playing it at 1 is good enough, unless you're playing some heavy board control, board wipe deck. I don't see this being super meta relevant, might be a little bit rogue relevant, because some people might think of fun decks to play with Exiton Knight at 3, but overall, I don't think this is a big change that really affects anything going forward. And then we have Interrupted Kaiju Slumber going from 1 to 3. So, two things about this card I wanted to say. So, as you guys might have known, um, TCG is re releasing a new card called like Anti-Kaiju something something in Savage Strike. It's a secret rare that basically prevents Kaijus. Um, and I believe that this card coming off the balance in part was to kind of market that card. But talking about Kaijus from a player type of perspective, Kaiju is basically good for slowing down the format. You probably start seeing Kaijus in the side deck again because uh, Slumber is actually really good. It clears the board and it gets you a free big monster. And overall, it's just pretty good. And after that, we have Monarch Stormforth going from 1 to 3. So Stormforth is probably the most prominent card in True Draco as the moment, because that's the only meta deck that actually tribute summons. Um, good card, removes a monster off your opponent's board, tributes it so they don't get effects of like being sent to graveyard by card effect, and a good card in general. I see True Draco's getting a buff from this, though I'm not sure if they would main deck 3. It's definitely good in the side, and having it at 3 basically means that you can rely on the Monarch Stormforth as a pretty good side deck option going forward in decks that tribute like True Draco or Monarch, if that would be relevant. And Eradicator Epidemic Virus going from 1 to 3. So Epidemic Virus is probably the cards that people don't see doing anything in Lens Balance, but I think is actually really good. And I think it's really good for um, two reasons. So going to the next meta, it's probably pretty obvious that Sky Striker and Altergeist would be very strong in the meta. And Sky Striker and Altergeist are both decks they rely very heavily on information, uh, spells, and traps. And Epidemic Virus basically says no to spells and traps. Um, I think going forward, what a lot of people don't realize or forgot about is that Thunder Dragon Colossus is a dark monster with over 2,500 attack. So if Thunder Dragons were to be vi still viable, I could see it being a very high possibility that they would play Triple Eradicator Epidemic Virus and basically just try to win you over by hitting you with Epidemic Virus hitting you with an epidemic virus and basically cutting off all your spells and traps and winning that way. Um, it's pretty scary actually because having triple virus means it's a card that you're going to have to try to play around, but it's going to be really difficult for you to play around because if they just go turn one, summon Colossus, flip at the Eradicator and call spells, there isn't really too much that you can do, unfortunately. For any barrier, cool for Infernities, basically you're solemn for Infernities. Infernities is pretty healthy as long as they can't like extra link you or make some insane board. So I do like this change. I don't think it's going to be insane. Uh, I hope some crazy guy doesn't make some broken combo and prove me wrong. Because Infernity Barrier at 3 is very scary. Then we have Wind Up Magician going from semi-limited to unlimited. 
Uh, pretty cool for windup players. I don't think this really changes anything. The combos for windups are still the same. You just got a little bit more consistent. So uh, windup magician shark, it's pretty cool. You can test it out if you want. And I think going forward, someone's gonna probably make a cool combo with it. Uh, I look forward to it, but I don't think this really impacts the windup deck that much because having it at two and having it at three isn't a huge difference other than the combo making variety of windups. And then we have our two unlimiteds, our last two. TG Hyper Librarian to three and Limited Removal to three. Librarian at three probably doesn't change too much because I don't think most decks play three anyways. Um, hopefully someone doesn't make some synchro spam deck that draws like a million cards and FTKs you and proves me wrong. But um, I don't think being at three would change too much because most people will sit on two for the decks that do play two anyways. Uh, nevertheless, having it at three is pretty cool. And lastly, I have Limited Removal. Uh, pretty cool if you play those really cheaty machine decks. I call it cheaty because the middle removal is basically a card that lets you steal and cheat wins out of people. Uh, I don't say cheat as in like you're literally cheating them, but it's like you're kind of like stealing the wins, you're kind of cheating them, you know? It's like you have no chance to win, but you just like limit removal on a 6k monster and just pump it to 12k, and when you're down by all the life in the world and all the advantage, you just miraculously somehow come back. And limit removal is a card that lets you do that. Um, in trains, and in like stuff like Ancient Gear and Cyber Dragons, where your board control isn't super prominent, Limited removal is a card that basically just says, I want to end the game right now, and if you don't have something to stop me, you're basically going to lose. Limited removal is a card that does nothing for your consistency. It's purely a card that basically says, I want to end the game. Uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about my random thoughts about this ban list. Um, Thunder Dragons have went from a combo heavy deck by having Snow and all the dangers and all these consistency cards like Gold Stark and Brilliant Fusion, and it's been dumbed down to a point where this Eradicator Epidemic Virus might be the big catalyst that makes Thunder Dragon still strong. Uh, the decks that were strong before are still pretty strong with the exception of Dark Combo Warrior, which basically was Rongo Loop with Bradditch because Bradditch, even with double like Break Sword or double something in the back, uh, like um, a Fog Blade, might not be strong enough to contest the meta anymore. Um, and Thunder Dragon's not being a combo deck basically slowed the format down. It's actually a really good format because I believe that with all these unlimited changes making Necroz Unlimited, having Barrier back at 3, Stormforth and Kaiju Unlimited, it encourages people to play more Rogue and more variety. So you might see like some Necroz flying around, you might see some El Shaddaa Contra flying around, you might see all these random decks that haven't been meta relevant for such a long time just come and actually be able to be played. And it encourages more variety of gameplay, which is good because Konami has always been like kind of restrictive on what cards you're allowed to play, and they always want you to play the new cards. And having this change actually is really nice because you get to see more decks. You don't get to go to a Locals and play Skystriker for eight rounds anymore. You don't go to a YCS and expect to play against Goki or Alter Guides for like five rounds in a row. So really nice to see some variety and some change in the meta. Yes, it's going to make it harder to side because you're going to have more things that you have to learn what to side for and those specific side deck cards for them. But overall, it's a very healthy change. This balance removed a lot of degeneracy like Topologic Gumbler Dragon, uh, Magical Midbreaker Field, Rango. So it basically lets you play a lot more. Um, games might not actually be two turns anymore. It's not going to be, I set up my board and I pass to you, and if you don't have an out, I just win the game. It's going to be actually more fun and interactive. So I think going forward, this is a really good format to uh, play in. And I feel like YCS Chicago, which is in two weeks, is going to have a lot of really unexpected and fun road decks in feature matches or in Top Cut. And I really look forward to it because this is actually one of the few metas where you have an interactive gameplay that focuses on people's creativity and deck building with all these new cards being unlimited. And I really strongly hope that some new combo deck doesn't arise and kill all the fun because it looks to have, it looks like we're going to have a really fun meta moving forward. Uh, I'm going to be ending the video now. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this balanced review.